Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about a concept of probability called independent events. Two events, A and B, are called independent events if knowledge about the occurrence of one of them has no effect on the probability of the other one. To understand what this means, we're going to take a look at a survey from a restaurant at lunch and dinner service as to whether the service was good or poor. And we're going to first find the probability that the service was good given that the meal was lunch. So we're restricting ourselves just to the lunchtime service. This is called a conditional probability because we're finding the probability under the condition that it was only lunch. Out of the lunchtime service, 23 of the respondents said that the service was good and there were 56 customers altogether that answered the lunchtime poll. So that means that the probability that service was good given that the meal was lunch is gonna be 23 over 56, which by the way is approximately 0.41. Now what we would like to know is, is the probability of good service affected by knowing which meal occurred. We're going to compare the probability of service being good at lunch with the overall probability of service being good. Well, to determine what the probability of service being good overall would be, we have to look at the total number of people who said that the service was good, which is 48, out of the total who completed the survey, regardless of whether they were eating lunch or dinner. So that's going to be 48 divided by 97 is the probability of good service overall, which is approximately 0.49. Well, 0.41 and 0.49 are not equal. So what that means is that knowledge that it was a lunch meal impacted the probability of good service. So we would say that the event of service being good and the event that we had lunch are not independent events. In general, we can say two events A and B are called independent events if the knowledge about the occurrence of one of them has no effect on the probability of the other one. The way we would represent this using probability notation would be with the symbols for conditional probability. The probability of B happening, given that we know A happened, must be still the exact same probability that we would have gotten for B even if we didn't know A happened in order for the events to be independent. Or equivalently, the probability of A, given that B occurred, should be equal to exactly the original probability of A with no knowledge about B occurring. So let's look at this example. We're going to use the idea that the conditional probability of B given A must equal the probability of B in order for the events to be independent to check to see if these two events are independent. So the two events we're comparing for or checking for independence are event A, we drew a, an ace from a 52 card deck, or event B, we selected a red card from a 52 card deck. Let's take a look at a 52 card deck so we're talking about aces, which there are four aces. You can see them at the top of each of these stacks. The aces are, well, I guess they're kind of at the bottom of the stack, but they're at the top of the picture. The aces are the cards with the A on them. So there's four of those, one of each suit, diamonds, clubs, spades, and hearts. And then um, out of the deck, uh, half of the deck are black cards, spades, and clubs, and half of the deck are red cards, diamonds, and hearts. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the probability of getting a red card out of that entire deck, and we're gonna compare it to the probability of getting a red card given that we know the card we drew was an ace. And we're gonna determine whether the events A and B are independent. So first of all, the probability of getting a red card is just the number of red cards out of the total number of cards, so 26 over 52, which reduces to one half of the deck. The probability of B, given that A has occurred, there is a formula for this conditional probability, 
It's the number of elements that are in A and B divided by the number that are in A. But I like to think of it a little bit more intuitively. What I mean by that is we're, we've reduced our entire universe of possibilities down to just A. So we know that we've drawn an ace. So we only have four ways that can happen. And out of those, we wanna know what's the probability of getting a red. Out of the four aces, two of them, the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds are red, two out of four or one half is the probability of getting a red card if you know you were choosing out of, an, out of aces. So to answer the question about whether these events are independent, we could say, we can definitely say, um, yes, these two are independent because one half is equal to one half. So again, two events A and B are called independent events if knowledge about the occurrence of one of them has no effect on the probability of the other one happening. We're gonna use this same idea and the same uh, way of checking for independent events on this next example. This example is about a pair of dice and we want the first event to be a red die well, the pair of dice, one is red and one is green, and event A is the event that the red die is odd, and event B is the event that the green die is odd. So in order to determine if these two, if these two are independent events, we have to find the probability of B and the probability of B given A. Then we're gonna be able to determine whether events A and B are independent. So let's start with the probability of B having an odd green. In order to understand that probability, let's look at the product table for rolling two dice. Rolling two dice is a two-part task, so it can be represented in a product table, and which is often very helpful. So here's my product table that shows all the possible outcomes. So for example, this outcome here would be the outcome that the green is uh, shows a four and the red die shows a three. What we're interested in is finding the probability that the green die has an odd value showing. So that's gonna be in the three columns, one, three, and five with the, the odd possible values. So all of the outcomes in column one, all of the outcomes in column three, and all of the outcomes in column five are outcomes where the green die is odd. The red die might be odd or not odd, we don't know. It's a mix, but we just wanna know how many where the green die is odd. Well, there's six in each of these columns. So altogether, there are 18 rolls in which the green die is odd. And then to find the probability of that happening, we have to divide that by the total number of outcomes in the whole product table. Well, this is a six by six product table, so there are 36 outcomes altogether. So the total number of outcomes is 36, and the favorable outcomes, rolling an odd green die is 18. So we divide the favorable by the total and we get 18 over 36, which reduces to one half. So the probability of getting an odd green is one half. Well, that makes sense, right? Green die half the time it's odd, half the time it's even. All right, but now let's look at the probability of B given A. That is the probability of an odd on the green die. That is the probability of an odd on the green die given that there's an odd on the red die. So again, we're gonna look at our product table. Since we're given that there was an odd on the red die, we are restricting our sample space a bit. We are not including all 36 possibilities. We know for some reason that the red die has an odd on it, which means we're limited to the results in these three rows. How many uh, results are in those three rows? Six and six and six is 18 again. So there are 18 scenarios in which the red die is odd. We wanna know out of those, and how many times is the green die also odd? Well, that's gonna occur in the columns one, three, and five, but not the whole column, because we're restricted to the scenarios where the red is odd. So we're gonna have three possibilities here, 
three possibilities here and three possibilities here for a total of nine possibilities. So the probability of rolling a green die, given that we're only allowed to have odd red dies, is gonna be nine divided by 18, which reduces to one half. So when we're asked to determine whether events A and B are independent, we can say yes, one half equals one half, so these two events are independent. Knowledge of a red of an odd red die does not impact the probability of an odd green die. Let's do one more using the same definition of independent events to determine whether two events are independent. We're going to change the scenarios just slightly. Event A is the event that at least one die is odd. It could be the red die, it could be the green die, it could be both. Event B is the event that the green die is odd. So we're gonna go through the three-step process. We're gonna find probability of B, probability of B given A, and then determine if they're independent. So first of all, the probability of an odd green we've already discussed. We know that there are 18 ways to get an odd green out of the total number of 36 outcomes, which is one half probability. For part B, things have changed though. We're gonna find the probability of an odd green given that at least one of the dice is odd. So let's look at the product table and let's figure out where we have at least one odd and then we're gonna see how many of those we have um, an odd green. So to have at least one odd, we could either have the reds, red dice roll an odd, which happens in these three rows, or we could have the green die be odd, which happens in these three columns. So any of these possibilities are okay because there's at least one number out of the two that's odd. So how many is that all together? Well, in this row we have, or rather this column, we have six, here we have three, six, three, six, and three. So if you add those all up, you're gonna get 27 different scenarios where we have at least one of the dice being odd. By the way, another way to do this would be to use complements. You could have identified the scenario, the complement of that. The complement of at least one odd is no odds. So we could cross off this and the ones that have two evens, which by the way, there's nine of them, subtract 36 minus nine, and we would see we're left with 27, where at least one of them is odd. All right, now what we're interested in is out of those highlighted um, rows and columns, how many of those have an odd green die? Well, the green die is going to be odd when we are in the columns 1, 3, and 5. And so that would be these six outcomes, and these six outcomes, and these six outcomes, where the green die is either a 1, a 3, or a 5. It's an odd value. So we have 27 total possible outcomes since we're restricted to those where at least one of the dice is odd. And out of those, we have six, 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 we have 18 outcomes where the green die is odd. It could be that the red die is odd, or it could be the red die is not odd, but either way, there's 18 that the green die is odd. The probability of B given A is going to be um, 18 out of that 27 which reduces to two thirds. So let's answer the question about independence. Are A and B independent? No, because the probability of B was one half and the probability of B given A was two thirds. You actually have a better chance of getting a green die being odd when you know at least one of the dice is odd, which makes sense, right? So these two uh, events are not independent. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.